Hi, my name is Eugene Stepanov. I'm a senior database solution architect with AWS. Here at AWS, I focus on SQL Server and Postgres. And today, we will talk about a brand new feature that we launched on May 19th of this year, and that is RDS support for SQL Server integration services. Now, integration services, together with analysis services and reporting services, have been such an important part of SQL Server ecosystem that now it is part of many, many uh, BI solutions. Now, prior to this launch, you could still work with all those tools, but you would have to host them outside of your RDS instance. So you would have your database workload on your RDS instance, but you would have to spin up another EC2 instance, and that's where you would host your SSIS, your uh, analysis services or reporting services. And obviously that works, but it requires an additional, additional cost, um, uh, not only for the underlying hardware, but also for the, for the separate SQL Server license. And obviously, from the, from the cost perspective, that is suboptimal. Now, we, AWS, take our customers' feedback very, very seriously. And that was our feedback from our customers, customers like yourself, that we need ability to be able to host those tools on the RDS instance, on the RDS instance itself. And as of May 19th, now you can do it. So the agenda for today First, we will take a look at some of the prerequisites that this feature comes with. Then we will take a look at step-by-step -step instructions. Um, and we're going to spend a lot of time on the, on the console. And um, by the end of it, we'll have, we'll have a live demo. And I will be coming back to the instructions, to the step-by-step -step instructions, as we progress and through the demo. Um, we will end this conversation with some of the limitations that this feature comes with. And again, the most of the time, we will spend building the actual working uh, uh, proof of concept. All right. All right, prerequisites. Um, the first one, SSIS must be enabled in the option group. Uh, those of you who already worked with native backups or possibly SSRS or possibly watched my previous video that where I covered reporting services know that all these features first have to be enabled in the option group. And SSIS follows the, follows the same path. That's where you enable it. The second, CLR enabled flag has to be flipped to one in the parameter group. Now, let's not get confused here. Uh, CLR, generally speaking, has very limited support on RDS. And um, on 2017, it's not supported altogether. On 2016, you can only execute safe CLR, right? So this flag doesn't change those anything about those limitations, right? It, it's just a hard requirement for you to be able to execute SSIS on the RDS instance itself. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna flip it to one. And the, the third one, SSIS is supported starting with those build numbers. So for 2017 standard, both standard and enterprise, uh, it is supported starting with version 3223.3 or anything later. And for 2016, both standard and enterprise. It is supported starting with 5426.0 or later. The fourth bullet point is that RDS instance, the one that will be hosting the SSIS package, has to be AD joint. And not only AD joint, that Active Directory has to be AWS managed. You cannot join the RDS instance with the self-managed uh, Active Directory. And the last requirement is that S3 integration feature must be enabled on that RDS instance. And uh, that's because the way we deploy the SSIS packages, 
all goes through S3 very, very similar to the way we work with native backups. All right, um, step by step. Uh, this is very high level. Um, and first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the custom option group where we're going to enable SSIS. Second, we're going to create custom parameter group where we're going to enable CLR. Then we will launch a couple of couple of uh, domain join RDS instances. And then we will spend some time configuring Windows Auth user for the SSIS. And we will finish the demo with downloading, deploying, and executing uh, SSIS, SSIS package. With that, now let's jump straight to the demo. All right, we're here on the console. Uh, and before we do anything, let's explore and let's see what I already have um, in my account. So let's start with EC2. And here on EC2, we have two running instances. And the first one is Jumbox, right? Jumbox is nothing but uh, essentially empty uh, EC2 instance that's sitting in a, in a public subnet where I can have uh, RDP access to and I can take full control over it. Now, I also have my this, this dev box. And dev box is another EC2 instance that's now sitting in the private subnet. And that's where I develop all my stuff. Uh, that dev box is loaded with SQL Server, Visual Studio, Data Tools, um, uh, everything, everything that's with the entire with the entire stack, right? Now uh, let's go to on RDS, and here on RDS, I don't have anything. Um, essentially, we will be launching. A um, couple of RDS instances, and that's going to be part of the demo. And on S3, I have two buckets where that we will be working with. Uh, first of all, I have SSIS packages. It's currently it's empty, but we will be using this this bucket. And then second one, this Adventure Work Works backup uh, bucket where I have uh, DW2017 backup. And my SSIS package is built against AdventureWorks DW2017. It's a very, very simple package, but it requires the schema and the data. And uh, that's what we're gonna, be, we're gonna be using. And also, uh, let's take a look at my directory service. On the directory service, I already have mycorp2.com um, Microsoft Managed AD, and it's uh, of size standard. Um, those of you who watched my reporting services video, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same directory. All right. Uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and let's create our option group um, that's the first requirement and later we will create our parameter group so here on rds we go and we go to the options group and we're going to create a group and let's call it uh let's call it ssis enabled going to say SSIS enabled. We're going to go with SQL Server Enterprise Edition, and we're going to go with the latest version. Create the group. Here's our SSIS enabled. Let's go to it, and let's add options. So the first option we're going to add is obviously integration services. And let's add that immediately. All right, it looks like our SSIS feature has been enabled. And now I want to go ahead and I want to add one more option. 
and that is our ability to work with native backups since we're going to be working with the adventure works dw and that's the the backup i showed you in my three bucket that i showed you earlier we're going to need to enable this feature in our option group and obviously um native backup requires an im role that has enough permissions to be able to download and upload stuff from the S3 bucket. So that's this S3 backup and restore role that I have um, that actually I use for, um, for all my uh, S3 integration tasks. And all right, so let's go ahead and let's immediately add that. Scroll down. All right, and now I see that my SSIS enabled custom option group um, has native backup and SSIS enabled. So we just completed the first requirement and that's custom option group. Let's go ahead and let's work now on our parameter group. Um, if you remember, the second requirement is to have CLR enabled flag set to one in the custom parameter group. So let's go ahead and let's create a parameter group. For, we're going to pick SQL Server Enterprise, latest one, 14.0. And let's call it CLR enabled. And let's have the same description. Oops. Let's create. All right, it's now CLR enabled. Well, let's find CLR. CLR enabled. That's the flag. And you can see that right now it's set to zero, but allowed values is zero and one. And it is modifiable, which means you can flip that. So let's go ahead and let's change that. Flip that to one and save changes. Right, so now it is set to one. CLR enabled. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and let's launch uh, two of our RDS instances. Um, we're going to be hosting our SSIS package only on one RDS instance. But the reason why I want to launch two RDS instances because I want to I wanted to show how you build not only local connection manager connection manager that points to the local box, but I also want to develop a package that have a couple instances involved, and one of those instances will be a remote instance. So for that purpose, let's go ahead and let's create SQL Server. Well, let's go ahead and let's pick the latest one. I'm going to go with the dev template database one. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to give it a master user. And confirm my password. I'm gonna leave my instance size at the default. Let's increase that to a hundred. Let's disable auto scaling. Uh, I am going to leave it as single AZ, default VPC. Let's deploy that to the private subnet group. I suggest you do the same. Otherwise, that's just a recipe for disaster. And for my security group, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick existing one. I have the security group called private SQL Server security group where I have my TCP 1433 enabled. Oops. All right. And here we're coming up on the Windows Auth. That's where you enable it. And I have only one, um, only one uh, directory, which is mycorp2.com, the one we saw earlier. And as far as additional configuration, 
Well, let's find our custom parameter group, CLR enabled, and let's find our custom option group, SSIS enabled, and everything else, I'm just going to leave it as default. Uh, I'm just going to disable everything else because it's going to deploy faster. That's the only reason. All right, so that's going to be cannot read property directory ID. Interesting. Let's scroll back. Well, let's browse the directory. Uh, everything looks looks okay. Let's create it again. All right. It it might be some some browser glitch. All right. So we are creating um first rds instance let's go ahead and let's create two as i said earlier all right and the second instance will be an exact copy of the first one so let me fly through the screen real quick All right, here we're coming up on the options, option group and parameter group. And I will pick exactly the same uh, custom parameter group and the option group, but not because we're going to be again deploying SSIS package to the second instance. Again, we will be deploying the SSIS package to the first instance only. Um, the reason why I'm picking the custom groups here because I still want that AdventureWorks 2017 DW database to be restored and the, the native backup feature is enabled in our SSIS option group, right? So that's the reason why I'm picking uh, this option group. Otherwise, I could just I could go with the default ones, all right? And I am going to disable all the other great features like performance insights and backup and enhanced monitoring and the only reason why i want to deploy that faster and that's 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 really all all right so create database and that's going to take that's going to take a minute so i will pause and i will come back as soon as that's done thank you all right it seems like both of our databases database one and database two are up and running and both of them available so why don't we go ahead, connect to them, and restore AdventureWorks DW backup on those instances. So the first one, uh, let's grab that endpoint. Let's go to my dev box. Uh, again, if you remember the EC2Con dashboard that I showed you, I have two boxes, the jump box, and my development box. This is my development box where I have SQL Server, Visual Studio, Data Tools, the entire stack, the entire Microsoft development stack installed on it. So in here, here I have Management Studio. So why don't we go ahead and connect to our first endpoint. There's database one, and we're gonna use a master user which is SQL login to connect to it. All right, so you see an empty, an empty R instance. Again, RDS admin is part of our control plane. It's always there. You have no control over it or visibility into it. And because we enabled uh, SSIS, now you see SSIS database show up here. And, um, and, and, and I hope that makes sense. Now, let's go ahead and open up my script. I have a script here that has a restore command. 
So here's the here's the drop database. Here's the restore command right here. We're gonna be restoring AdventureWorks DW 2017. The back the location of the backup is right here. That's my S3 bucket. And we're gonna restore it with rec uh, no recovery equals zero. So this is double negative. Uh, essentially, we want to restore and we want to recover so we can we can query that database. And uh, it's a, it's a full backup. All right. So we just created this job, and now let's go ahead and let's connect to the second endpoint. Let's grab our second endpoint. And let's repeat. All right, this is again, instance is identical. So let me have new query, oops. Let me grab the restore command. And let's execute that. All right, so it's gonna take a minute or two. Actually, let's refresh databases. And here we already see AdventureWorks DW2017. It looks like it's available. It's not saying restoring. And let's refresh the second one. And it is also now available here, AdventureWorks DW2017. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. Let's see where we at. Um, here's step-by-step -step instructions. Essentially, we completed step number one, number two, and number three. So we're almost halfway, halfway done. So next, let's go ahead and let's work on number four, where we're going to configure the Windows authenticated user for the SSIS. All right, we're back on our SSMS um, screen, and we just restored AdventureWorks DW2017 on both of our instances, on database one and database two. Again, repeating myself here, we will deploy our SSIS package only to one of those instances, database one, for example. Uh, and database two will only be used as a target. We will be executing um, uh, uh, select statements against a uh, database two, and the only reason why I I want to I wanted to launch both of those instances is to be able to demonstrate how you work not only with local connection strings but also with the remote connection strings. So everything that we're gonna do from now on will involve an instance that will be hosting our SSIS package. For, for this purposes, I'm gonna completely disconnect from da database two, instance database two, we done there. And um, again, everything we will be executing from now on will go against database one. Now, um, right now we are connected to database one instance as a master user. And a master user is SQL authenticated user. But for the purposes of SSIS, uh, uh, SSIS package and being able to execute SSIS package, we need a Windows authenticated user. So let's go ahead and let's open up the script that I have. And if you remember when we launched our RDS instances, we join them with a MyCorp2 um, domain. Um, these instances are part of the domain, but they at this point have no idea about the user called an admin. So why don't we go ahead and we create a login against a database one and let's execute that. 
All right, let's go to security. And here we have now mycorp2 slash admin um, login, instance level, instance level login. All right. Now, obviously, when we enable SSIS on this instance, SSIS database has been deployed on the instance. And there are very important roles, and that is SSIS admin and SSIS log reader that has been assigned, that has been granted to the master user. But again, we cannot use master user to execute SSIS, SSIS package because it's a SQL authenticated user. We need Windows authenticated user. And um, a master user has also been granted ability to assign those two roles to anyone else. So this script right here will give those privileges to uh, mycorp2 slash admin Windows account, right? Let's go ahead and let's execute that. All right, that's been successfully executed. And let's go ahead and let's check this out. Let's go to security and the users. And oh, let's go to mapping. I am looking for. Uh, let's take a look at the instance level. Here, security. User mapping. All right, so now a user mycorp2 slash admin has public SSIS admin and SSIS log reader in the database called SSISDB. All right, so this is great. Also later, if you, if you would like to schedule your SSIS package uh, and schedule it through um, SQL agent, you're gonna need this list of permissions to be uh, add granted. So why don't we head and execute this script? I'm not going to read through through the entire script. Um, all I'm going to say is it's very well documented here on our website, where we give line by line instructions on how to set up Windows authenticated user for SSIS. Here's a script where I picked that up. It's right here, and I include this link in my PowerPoint at the very at the very end of the PowerPoint um, there is there is um, uh, there is this first link all right so let's go back to the to the management studio and now essentially we are ready this instance is ready to 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 host an SSIS package. So let's go to Visual Studio and let's see what we're gonna be deploying. All right, this is a very, very simple package. Um, let me do a couple of passes at it and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna uncover a layer by layer. Essentially what that does, it's very simple. It has the flat file as a source. It's gonna read some text file. On the other hand, on the other side of the joint, it has already be data source. It will be executing a select statement against SQL Server database. Then both result sets will be sorted. Then these sorted results will be used in the merge join, and later um, the result of the merge join will be inserted against a target database. Now, let me jump back to SSMS and let's explore AdventureWorks DW2017 and a couple of tables that we have here. So we have a table 
called fact currency rate. And what it is, it's a very simple table, and essentially it's uh, there are what five six columns, and the the composite key here is the currency key and the date key. It's a fact table, and obviously it tracks the change of the exchange rate for a particular currency on a given on a given day, right? So and it has essentially there are two measures. There is the average rate that's daily, and then there's the end of the date exchange rate. So our SSIS package will work against this table. Now, AdventureWorks also has a dimension called dim currency. So let's take a look at this. And obviously, it is also very simple, right? There's a currency key, there's a currency ISO code, and then there's a currency name. Now. I also put together uh, an input file called currency. So this currency file have the ISO code for the currency. It has a date key. It has the daily average. It has end of the day uh, exchange rate and it has the daytime. All right. So let's go back to the uh, to the SSIS designer. And essentially what we're going to do, we're going to ingest a flat file, this file. We will sort it based on the currency code. Over here, we will execute a select query with currency key and currency alternate key against dim currency dimension. We're going to again sort both of those result sets and we're going to merge them. The reason why I'm merging them is because their currency code comes with the ISO currency code. But I need currency key from the dimension called dim currency. So essentially what this does, it mimics a lookup where there is input file come in and there is a lookup branch that does nothing but a lookup of the currency key based on the currency ISO code. And um, it mimics uh, it mimics a daily pool, and then the result of this merge join will be inserted against our target database. Now, but here's why I picked this SSIS, SSIS package. Uh, that's SSIS package I developed a long time ago for a completely different presentation. But the reason why I picked it because it has three connection managers, um, one local flat file and two remote um, SQL Server connection managers that are both of them pointing to remote um, instances currently. And that mimics the, the scenario where prior to this launch, you were still able to use SSIS, but you would have to you had to host it outside of your RDS instance. And we're gonna make this package work in a second. And again, it's gonna mimic very well where SSIS is running on EC2 outside of your RDS, but it it's going against RDS just as a as a source and the target, right? But after we deploy this package to one of our RDS instances, one of these connection managers will turn into a, 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 a connection that points to a local box, and another connection manager will turn will remain a, a manager that still points to a remote box. And, and the local file, of course, will, will remain a, a, a manager that's pointing to a local local flat file. All right. So let's make it work and 
uh, let's start with the flat file. So right here, I have a local flat file. And um, I pointed out earlier, I, I showed you the currency file. But let's take a look at the location of this file. I put it into in, on drive D folder S3. Now, let me go back to my PowerPoint. And one of the first limitations, one of the uh, imp very important limitations that you always need to be aware of, that uh, uh, RDS is the managed instance, so you don't have access to operating system and file system. But there is S3 integration feature. And that feature essentially unlocks D slash S3 local folder for, for your use. So when you enable SSIS, anything, stuff like input files, output files, any type of the temporary um, uh, temporary transient files that, that, that you want to create uh, at the runtime, all of that stuff has to go under DS3. Now, um, let me go back to my uh, Visual Studio. And, and, and this is what I've done here. Even though I'm on EC2, and because I don't want to rebuild this connection manager at the runtime, I'm just following the same, the same, the same convention. I created uh, my D drive, and I created S3 folder, and that's where I uh, put my currency file on. And now, after I deploy this, SSIS package over to the RDS, um, essentially, I wouldn't have to change anything about this connection manager. I wouldn't have to build it at the runtime, bind it, and, and all of that fun stuff, right? All right, so enough said about the flat file. Now, let me actually go ahead and let me delete all the stuff that I inherited, and let's start fresh. <clears throat> so all ADB source, this this source we will be using to execute that lookup query, right? So let's go ahead and let's create new OLEDB connection. And that OLEDB connection will use, um, actually, let's go to the console and let's grab an, an endpoint for database two, right? Database two is that what, we're going to be going against as the remote target. Database 2. And database 2, it's going to be a remote target. So let's go ahead with the SQL authentication. So I'm going to give it a master username, password. I'm going to save my password for now and let's pick AdventureWorks and let's test connection. Connection works. And let's save. All right. AdventureWorks DW. All right. So here's the AdventureWorks DW database 2. Let's pick a table, let's pick a, a SQL command. And that command, all we're going to do is we're going to pick um, these two columns. We don't even need currency name. We just need currency key and the alternate key. Let's place it here. Let's preview currency key. Awesome. All right, we're good here. Uh, let's see the sort. Sort we're going to do on the currency alternate key. Perfect. Flat file is already functioning. And here's we have the external columns, the output columns. Now sort is on the currency ISO currency code. Perfect. Merge join is seems to be configured properly. It's going to be the ISO code from the incoming flat file against the currency alternate code uh, of our dimension. Perfect. Okay. 
And now let's create another connection manager for the destination. Now destination is going to be our instance database one, and that that's going to be the instance that's hosting SSIS package. So let's go ahead and create new OLEDB connection. Let's gonna go ahead and grab the endpoint. Here's the endpoint. Let's, for now, even though we can use both Windows or SQL, for now, let's go with the SQL server authentication. And again, we're going to use master user. Let's pick Adventure Works. Let's test connection. Connection is fine. And let's click OK. We just created it. Let's open it up. Let's see the mappings. All right. Mapping seems to be OK. All right. So actually now we are ready to execute SSIS package from within the Visual Studio sitting on my development box. And again, both of those connection managers are remote connection managers and the flat file that's sitting locally. Now, there is only one thing, and that is, um, and that's the fact table, fact currency rate, this table right here. Let's truncate that table because we're going to be inserting our 12 brand new records. Truncate table. I just don't want to violate um, uh, any any foreign keys that, that, that might exist here. So let's truncate that. All right. And now let's go back and let's hit start. All right, it's going to build, it's going to deploy, and here we just, it seems like we ingested 12 records. We look those records up against our RDS instance, and we inserted those 12 records against our other RDS instance. But again, we just executed it from within the management studio. Now we need to work and we make, need to make that package ready for the deployment and then deploy it on the RDS instance. All right, let me stop that. And let's work on a couple of things. First of all, this lookup source will continue to be a remote instance even after the deployment but this destination connection manager will become local now when you work with ssis on rds if your connection is local you have a choice you can do windows auth or sql auth when you're working with the remote can remote instances sql authentication is the only option and obviously, when you're working with the SQL auth, you have two options. You can store your credentials with the connection manager itself, which would mean that your, your credentials will be embedded in the, in, in, in the package. Um, they will be encrypted, but, but, but still they will be embedded in the, in the package. Um, or you can parameterize your connection manager and essentially build and bind it at the runtime. All right, so for then what I suggest we do for our destination, let's go ahead and let's switch to Windows authentication since that's an option. Uh, and for our lookup table, we will do, we will parameterize and we will pass the password at the runtime. All right, 
Um, so let's do that. So here's the destination. And let's go ahead, let's switch to from SQL Server Auth to Windows Authentication. And here's one more very, very important point. Um, if you choose to use Windows Auth for the local connection managers, you're going to have to specify fully qualified domain name for your server name. Now, what you see right here is not a fully qualified domain name. This is the endpoint, right? So the fully qualified domain name for our database one instance would be database one dot corp two. I'm sorry, my corp two dot com. And let's now test the connection. Connection is successful. And let's go ahead and let's save it. But for our lookup, which is going against database two instance, well, let's go ahead. Well, actually, it's not here. Let's go ahead and let's parameterize. Let's parameterize a password. And let's create a new parameter called password. Uh, we will give it a scope of it's going to be a package. Uh, the scope will be at the, the package at the package level. And uh, let's click require it. We will require we will require a password password to be provided because otherwise we're not going to be able to to authenticate. All right. And it doesn't look it likes it. And probably the reason is because we have not provided the value for our uh, password parameter. So here's the value. Let's save it. Let's go back to the data flow. And also, every time. Every time you parameterize your connection manager, it's trying to work in the offline mode. So let's uncheck that. And now you see a little, a little function icon here, which means that your connection manager has been parameterized and it's going to be built at, at the runtime. All right. So um, again, we're preparing the package to be able to, for us to be able to deploy it. We just switched the authentication to Windows authentication on the destination side. We parameterized the um, connection manager on the source side. Uh, and now let me flip back to my PowerPoint. And there are a couple of more important parts. I already mentioned that all input files, output files, temporary files, transient files, stuff like this, all has to go through the uh, S3 folder on the D drive. And um, essentially, there are very two important uh, 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 SSIS uh, uh, properties. And one of them is blob temp storage path. And another one is buffer temp storage path. So we're going to let's make sure that those point to S3 folder. And the second one is the this the second limitation, which is says that uh, the protection mode for SSIS package has to be do not save password. So let's go ahead and let's let's make sure that those two are set up properly. All right, um, here these two paths. Blob temp storage and buffer temp storage are pointing to D S3 folder, local folders. And then the protection mode, let's go to project my SSIS pipeline properties. Or there's it's somewhere here, here on the security protection level. Let's flip that to do not say safe sensitive data. Again, this is a hard requirement for you to be able to execute your SSIS package on RDS. Do not save sensitive. Apply. All right. 
All right, that was a package level. And now, I'm sorry, that was a project level. And now at the package level, we should have the same. Um, the same setting, the, the protection level here, the protection level. We should change that to do not save sensitive. All right. Now uh, they should match. Let's see now if we can build that. All right. So looks like our build is successful now. And we are ready to go ahead and try to upload and deploy this SSIS package on our yes instance. All right, let's rebuild. We're gonna rebuild the solution. Uh, we're gonna pick our IS pack. And by the way, IS pack deployment model is the only deployment model that is supported on RDS. So you cannot take individually, you cannot take the DTSX files and deploy them manually. Is pack is the only way to go. Uh, so let me open up another folder. And let's grab the IS pack. So I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to place this file on my desktop. And the reason why I want to place it on my desktop is because I want to upload it to my S3 bucket. And now hopefully you can understand how all the pieces fit together. Right, we needed the S3 integration because this is the way you deploy SSIS package. So here's on the SS, SSIS packages. Let's go ahead and let's upload our ISPAC file. Uh, desktop. And let's upload. And let's also upload our currency file because that's the flat file that we're gonna to need to have locally in order to be able to ingest it. All right, add file. And uh, let's find, it's also, I have it on my desktop. Let's upload that. All right, so now we have both of these files. Let's go back to our instance. And over here, I have a script. on the desktop and that's upload and execute all right so this is essentially the script that uploads uh, a file from the s3 bucket uh, downloads the file from the s3 bucket down to the rds instance but in order for us to work with those commands with those apis we have to be Windows authenticated, not SQL authenticated. And currently, we are connected as the master user, which is SQL authenticated uh, user, right? So why don't we go ahead and we connect to this engine again, but this time we're gonna go with Windows auth. The user obviously is mycorp2 slash admin. So let's get connected. And now, Let's open up a new window. Now we connect it as an admin. Let's just copy that script. And let's close the original one. All right. So again, what this does, it's just going to transfer the ease pack from our S3 bucket down to the RDS instance. And then this command will transfer the currency text file from S3 bucket down to the RDS instance. So let's execute these two. Aha, uh -huh. we triggered an exception. Uh, let me let me zoom in. And the exception is that um, S3 integration feature is not enabled. And that does make perfect sense because when we launched our RDS instance, what we forgot to do, what I forgot to do, is to enable S3 integration. So we go here, this is our database one. And over here, 
under the managed IAM roles, we're gonna need we're gonna need to associate an IAM role that has uh, enough permissions to copy and uh, download and upload files um, against the S3 bucket, and uh, and that's the feature that that's the S3 integration. So let's add this role, and it takes I don't know 10, 20 seconds. Well, here here's it's active now. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to our SSMS and let's try to repeat. All right, so both commands, uh, both tasks have been created. Again, download, uh, download and upload task, uh, asynchronous tasks, they return as soon as they've been created. Uh, but then you can monitor the progress of, the, of those tasks by executing this uh, RDS FN task status. And if you specify null comma zero, it's just gonna return everything. So here's our tasks, and that's gonna take um, a minute or two. So I'm gonna pause. It's been about a minute and a half. So let's execute the status um, query again. And it seems like both of our downloads, the download for the uh, my SSIS pipeline is pack and currency text file have been successfully completed. So now we're coming up on this next and, and essentially the very last task, and that is a deployment of the package. So let's go ahead and let's create that job. All right, so task type SSIS deploy project has been created and let's monitor the status. The task has been created. And again, that's gonna take a minute, uh, minute or so. So I'll pause. All right, that's been about two minutes. And if we execute the status command now, now we see that we triggered an error. All right, um, so, um, the way you debug it, essentially you pick up all of your exceptions here in the task info. So let's copy that and let's see. Let me let me parse it a little bit. All right. So what this says is that deployment has failed because it cannot find the folder for my SSIS pipeline. And that also makes total sense because we have not created the folder. Well, let's create the folder, description, let's click OK. Now folder is created. Well, let's repeat the task. All right, task has been created. I'm going to pause and we'll come back in about a minute or two. All right. It's been about a minute. We refreshed the status. And now we see that our SSIS deployment project has now been successful. So we just successfully deployed our SSIS package um, to, to, um, to RDS instance. So here's you can you can see in the object explorer you can see now our package .dtsx. Now let's go ahead and let's try to execute. But before we go ahead and execute, let's cancel out of here. Let's go ahead and let's configure it first. If you remember correctly, when we were in our Visual Studio, we said that the connection manager that end up pointing to the local instance is going to have Windows integrated authentication. Connection that's gonna to point to a remote instance will be parameterized and we created a password parameter, right? And essentially this, this little function icon is the sign that this connection manager has been parameterized. So now when we're trying to ex before we try and try to execute it, we need to go ahead and provide the value. So let's go ahead and let's provide the value for the password. 
So by doing so, we essentially uh, prevented that password being saved within that package itself. So we reconfigured the uh, the 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 variable and now actually one more thing let's go ahead and check there is there is still a records after our first execution so let's go ahead and let's truncate that and let's make sure before we execute anything let's make sure that we have completely empty table all right so now let's go ahead to the package and let's execute Parameter, we already populated the value. Let's click OK. Here's the message from Visual Studio saying that the operation, the task has been created. It's a synchronous call. Let's say yes, that we want to see the report. And here we go. We have a successful execution of our SSIS package. All right. Well, let's go back to the um, to this query and let's see whether that indeed was a successful pipeline execution and indeed we have we have our 12 records which brings us to the end of our demo but before we close i would like to go back to our powerpoint and spend a minute uh, talking about limitations now you have five bullet points here it is not entire list you can find the entire list uh, following that link down below uh, now Every time you talk, SSIS is a programming environment, and every time you talk about limitations of the programming environment in the, on the managed platform, um, you, you pretty much can be sure that that list will be substantial. So again, follow that link, you can find the, the full list. Uh, I'm just gonna mention a few big ones. The first one is the fact on the, on the local host, you can only work with d slash s3 folder now uh, again for input output files temporary files th that's where it all goes you can manage your uh, subfolder structure on the d slash s3 that's that's perfectly fine you can you can absolutely do that but if you manage to place any files outside of that d slash s3 we will be actively looking for those files and we will delete them now, the second one, do not save password protection mode. And we've talked quite a bit about that already. Now, the third one, uh, currently there is no integration with um, FSX or maybe a self-managed SMB file share. So if you have a, a, an input file or maybe an output file, then again, that local D, D slash S3 folder is the only option. The fourth limitation is importing and restoring an SSIS DB database from another instance is not supported. And as we already discussed, the connection manager against the remote instance can use SQL authentication only. If you work with a local connection manager, then, then you can do both. You can do SQL auth or Windows auth. Which brings us to the end of the of this demo. I hope that was beneficial. I hope now you can see that you can host your SSIS packages on RDS instance itself, and we just demonstrated that. And with that, I would like to thank every single one of you for finding time to watching that to watch that video. And uh, we would like I would like to um, wish you all happy computing from all of us at AWS. Thank you very much.